another artifact corner. Today we will be looking at some beautiful hat pins that we have in our collections. These hat pins are all from the Victorian period and likely belonged to Fanny Delord Webb Hall. She has a variety here. Some are topped with glass, some with metal filigree, and one even has a lovely pearl. In the Victorian and Edwardian period, women's hats were steadily getting larger, reaching their largest proportions around the 19-teens. To keep the hat securely in place, hat pins were a necessity. Let's learn a bit more about the history of hat pins. Hat pins have been in use as far back as the Middle Ages. Women in the medieval period wore a wimple, which is a cloth headdress which covers the head, neck, and the sides of the face. The way to hold the wimple in place is with a series of small pins. Hat pins continued to be used for the next 500 years, in various ways. Hat pins were mostly a cottage industry that often employed an entire family. They were time consuming to make and meant that quantities were limited. In 1832, pin making machines were patented in the United States and in less than two years, England and France began producing machine made pins. In the early Victorian period, women's bonnets were tied with ribbons that tied under their chin. As the Victorian period advanced, women's hats changed again, losing the ribbons and embracing the hat pin once again. The late Victorian period saw the explosion of larger hats, both in height and width. They could be decorated with flowers, feathers, ribbons, decorative silk ribbons, or left quite plain. At the turn of the 20th century, a unique phenomenon happened with hat pins. Per The Hat Pin, Fashionably Dangerous by Danielle Morin, Particularly around 1900 to 1912, hat pins were used as a defense tool against a type of leering, aggressive male known as a masher. The hats worn during this period had reached enormous proportions, so it followed that a large hat pin would be necessary to secure the millinery. More and more women in this period also began to enter public life unchaperoned. This was emboldened in part by the independence that developed out of the biking craze of the 1890s. Venturing out alone, women needed to be able to protect themselves on the streets and while using public transportation. There were many stories that told of unaccompanied women in public that used hat pins to ward off unwanted attention or that felt safer going out unaccompanied knowing that they could use a hat pin if needed much in the same way you might carry pepper spray today. Hat pins as weapons were even used in movies of the time. The film The House of Silence from 1918 used a hat pin as a murder weapon. Hats for women that required a hat pin to secure them fell out of fashion in the swinging 1960s, and most of us today don't use hat pins on a regular basis. More's the pity. It would be wonderful if we could find a picture of Fanny with one of these hat pins in use, but we don't have that many images of her, and the ones that we do have, no hat pins are visible. The hat pins are in quite good condition, and we are so lucky to have them in our collections. Thanks so much for stopping by.